Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash stories about Kevin. This post is from user legomaniac89. My boss's stepson is a Kevin to end all Kevins. So just over a year ago I switched jobs and went to work for a guy, Bob, who was running a new slash used aquarium shop. The shop was built onto his house, so as a result I've become pretty close with his family, including his 15 year old stepson, who is the most Kevin person I've ever met. For the first couple of months I thought he was just a bit quirky and clumsy, but as I've come to know him more, I've discovered that he is a Kevin of the highest order. Now I've known some dumb teenagers in my time, hell, I used to be one, but this kid is just another level. Just in the year that I've known him, he licked a lit match because he thought fire would taste like flaming a hot Cheeto. He cannot climb a flight of stairs without tripping up them. This is a multiple times a day occurrence. He once dropped a bowl of cereal and milk and rather than clean the mess with a towel, he soaked up the spill with his sock, a sock that was still on his foot. He then put on his shoes, went out to catch the bus and went to school with a soaking wet milk sock. He went to the school nurse that day because he was convinced that his foot was bleeding and soaking through his sock. He wants to be the first pro-Trump rapper and is currently pissed off at Kanye for stealing his idea. He's failing gym class. I have no idea how one fails gym class. He has broken more than 20 aquariums in the last year. When we buy new tanks they need washed and leak tested before we resell them. Kevin sometimes does this to help out but can't understand that when you wrap the hose around an aquarium, you can't just yank it free. For reference, I've been in the aquarium hobby for 12 years and I've broken two. He's not allowed to clean tanks anymore. Bob was selling an older, fairly good conditioned Cadillac that had been sitting in his driveway for a while. The day before the buyer came to pick it up, Kevin was mowing the yard and scraped the handle of the mower along the entire length of one side of the car. He likes to use Jew as an insult. When I called him out on it, I discovered that he thought Jewish people didn't actually exist. He thought they were an imaginary race of people that everyone pretended to hate. He played lacrosse on his school's team this summer and got benched all season because he told the coach that he didn't need to run laps or go to practice. This is probably why he's failing gym class. He left in the morning like normal to go catch the bus. Three hours later he came back saying that he missed the bus and he needed to be driven to school. The problem? It was Labour Day. There was no school. He stood at the bus stop for three hours on a day when there was no school. He eats absolutely everything in sight. If you leave food unattended for more than 10 seconds, it's gone. Bob went to Taco Bell and got food for the four of us. Kevin was left alone with it and ate his, mine, Bob's and half of his mom's food before he realised that it probably wasn't all for him. When he found out that I'm a chilli head, he bragged for a week about how he loved super spicy food too. He then tried to glob of my Escaresco after I warned him repeatedly not to and spent the next two hours crying and blaming me. We've been gradually remodelling the house when we're not working in the store. Kevin's bedroom was the first room we finished. He managed to put a hole in the wall on the first day he moved in. One day, completely out of the blue, he asked me, I know girls don't have a penis, but is there just like a hole beneath their belly button where a penis would go? Bob told Kevin to wash the truck one day earlier this year. Kevin thought he'd be helpful and wash out the fuel tank as well, with water. His school lets him rent a tablet for schoolwork. He got it taken away within a week because he was using it for porn. I assume he wanted to find out if girls had a hole where a penis should be. His parents signed him up for tutoring to help with his grades. Turns out all the tutoring in the world won't help your grades if you never turn in your homework. He was under the impression that homework was optional. Also, he routinely falls asleep in class. He thought that fish were just very active plants. Yes, really. He managed to tip over and dump the contents of the trash can he was taking to the roadside to be picked up. Rather than pick up the mess, he just kicked it around and spread it across the yard in hopes that it would be less noticeable if the mess was less concentrated. I know there's more I'm forgetting and I'll edit this post as I remember them or as Kevin gets more material. I'll just leave you with this tidbit. Kevin starts driving in three months. May the gods have mercy on us all. Edit 1. To everyone wondering if Kevin has some kind of undiagnosed mental health issues, I suppose it's possible, but it seems more like just a severe lack of common sense than anything else. I've never met his biological dad, but from what I've heard from his mom, he's one of these people who's habitually unemployed, yet spends all day bitching about how immigrants and minorities are a drain on society. 
I'm hoping Kevin will eventually grow out of his Kevinness and not follow in his dad's footsteps. Edit 2. A couple more. One just happened this week. The other apparently happened a couple of months ago and Bob just told me about it. Kevin decided he was going to practice his blacksmithing by removing the leaf catcher bag from the lawnmower and bending the shit out of the metal frame. He then realised after the fact that he was probably going to get in trouble for ruining the leaf catcher, so he decided to burn the bag and throw the frame in the trash. Bob found out, of course, and Kevin has spent the last week complaining about how tedious it is to manually rake the leaves out of the yard. Kevin discovered that you can take things apart with a screwdriver and decided to disassemble the blender with his newfound knowledge. He took the entire thing apart and had no idea how to put it back together again, so he left the pieces all over the counter. When his parents asked him why he did it, he first denied that it was him, and then claimed that the blender just randomly fell apart for no reason. Edit number 3 Since this is getting a bit of attention today, here's an update on how Kevin's 2019 has been so far. Kevin has not started driving yet, and he likely won't for at least another year. Bob bought him an old jeep that needed repairs before it was drivable, and Kevin managed to knock one of the side mirrors off with his bicycle. I have no idea how. Kevin has decided to start writing a fantasy novel, and in a moment of weakness I volunteered to be his beta reader. He then told me that it's going to be an erotic orc fiction with swords. He was making a grilled cheese sandwich and decided to experiment and put peanut butter on it. He burned the peanut butter, set off the smoke alarm, ate half of it, gagged, threw it in the trash, then dug it out of the trash and ate the rest. He isn't allowed to have a cell phone because he is still failing a number of classes and he is too easily distracted by technology. So he's been going to Walmart and buying the cheapest phone they have and hiding it from his parents. The problem is that he hides it in his pocket and doesn't know how to silence ringtones. He's had at least three phones taken away from him. He got a blunt from one of his friends at school, smoked it and then told his parents that the smell was his new cologne. Part 2 I'm back with more stories of the now 16 year old Uber Kevin. I've been at this job for close to two years now and not a week goes by where I don't hear stories from Bob, my boss, Kevin's stepdad or Anne, Kevin's mom. To be honest, I don't know why they share these things with me because it's really none of my business. But I'm not about to stop them because it's truly fascinating what Kevin manages to accomplish. I still get the occasional message about him from various Redditors here, so I'll address the three most popular points first. He's still not driving, nor will he be anytime soon. His parents decided that putting him behind the wheel of a two-ton machine could end with them accused of war crimes. So they told him that he wasn't allowed to take a driving test until he gets his grades up. We're safe for the foreseeable future. He apparently lost interest in the erotic orc fiction with swords that he was writing. He's writing a new book now that involves a shape-changing weapon and the apocalyptic wrath of God. That's all I know and I'm not volunteering to be to read this one. His parents have had him tested for autism and various other things and so far it's all come back negative other than mild ADHD. He's on medication for it. Whether he actually takes those meds is up for debate. I'm sticking with my initial analysis of borderline malicious laziness and a stunning lack of common sense. Given that he's not driving anytime soon, he's been using his bicycle as his primary means of transportation and that's going about as well as you'd expect. He was riding his bike through town and went into a store, came back out and saw that his bike had been stolen. His mum had to come pick him up. By the time she arrived, he realised that he had just forgotten what his bike looked like and it hadn't been stolen after all. A week later, his bike was actually stolen. He has a bike lock, he just didn't think it was necessary. His biological dad bought him a new bike to replace the stolen one. He's blown out the rear wheel three times, broken the seat twice, the chain twice and completely smashed the rear wheel rim just since the middle of May. Since his second bike is now in shambles, he asked Bob and Anne if he could borrow their bikes. Bob said hell no. Anne said sure. Kevin managed to snap the rear axle and somehow broke the rear cassette. I gotta say I'm almost envious of Kevin as his life is never dull. All I can do is enjoy his Kevinness by proxy and thank my lucky stars that he's not my kid. He borrowed the magnets from half a dozen coral frag racks we sell and promptly forgot where he left them. They're useless without the magnets. We had to order more. He found one of Bob's power drills and drilled a bunch of holes in a support beam for the porch. He dumped an entire 12 ounce can of fish food into one of the tanks. This was at the end of the day and we didn't notice until the next morning. The entire shop smelled like roadkill. He's not allowed in the store anymore. He got a job as a dishwasher at a nearby restaurant and was told to not come back after a week because he'd broken so many dishes. He shot himself in the leg with a pellet rifle because he wanted to know what it felt like to get shot because that's what thugs do. He was fine. He broke a plastic lawn chair and decided to burn it to destroy the evidence. 
He got found out when the fire pit began belching acrid black smoke everywhere. He went to a week-long youth group retreat a few hours away and forgot to pack any clean clothes. Anne had to drive all the way there with clothes for him. According to Anne, she had packed clothes for him, but he had left them all behind because he didn't think he needed them. He tried to shotgun a can of soda. He managed to spray himself in the face. He tried again the next day with the same results. Bob bought a 150 gallon preformed above ground pond to keep goldfish in during the warmer months. Kevin sat on the side and broke it. Kevin was bragging to his classmates that he had stolen drugs from his biological dad during a visit and would share them after school that day. A teacher overheard, he got on all sorts of trouble and had the drugs confiscated. They were fish oil capsules. <laughs> In the last post, I mentioned how he'd been buying cheap cell phones and unsuccessfully hiding them despite being grounded from technology for failing all of his classes. His parents finally broke down and bought him a very basic flip phone that he could use for calling purposes only. He sold it at a pawn shop. He absolutely refuses to brush his teeth. His parents brought him an electric toothbrush thinking that he might like it better than a manual one. He lost it. He got banned from the local comic book shop for spilling Mountain Dew everywhere. He decided he was going to cook a pork chop on the stove. He forgot about it and nearly caught the house on fire. Bob had cooked the pork chops the night before and apparently Kevin thought that once the meat gets cold, it somehow reverts to being raw and needs cooked again. Lately, he's been reading all kinds of survival books. He claims he wants to spend a year roughing it in the Canadian wilderness. I'm fairly certain he wouldn't even find Canada on a map. He's absolutely convinced that standing in front of a microwave while it's running will sterilise you. He goes as far as to retreat to the next room while he's nuking his food. His parents bought a truck a few states away and they decided to take a long weekend to go pick it up, leaving myself and Matt, a co-worker, to handle the store in that time. No problem, right? Except that they left Kevin at home as well, with a rather long list of explicitly articulated do's and don'ts. Not that he was expected to follow. They would have had better luck convincing a whale to spontaneously evolve into an elephant. He tried to use this parental reprieve to do everything he wanted without consequences. He tried to get into the store's cash drawer. I had the key with me at all times and even told me that Bob was okay with him taking cash out of the drawer once in a while. He isn't, obviously. He had a fire roaring in the grill, a shock back blowing air into the coals and was trying to melt a metal rod in the heat while using winter gloves to insulate himself. He claimed he was blacksmithing. Again. I probably shut it down before he caught the house or himself on fire. I went to the store's garage to look for something. Kevin was there and loudly announced, I I'm not doing anything. I hadn't asked. I still have no idea what he was up to. Kevin announced to Matt and I that he was having friends over for the night to smoke weed, take pills and whatnot. I said, not a chance. I called Bob. He said, absolutely fucking lutely not. I told Kevin and he said, his parents didn't have to know. He tried to bribe me with a few grams of weed. I turned him down. Matt stayed the night at the house, more to keep an eye on Kevin than anything else. Kevin invited his friends over anyway. They filled the house with weed smoke and threatened Matt when he confronted them. Matt called me, then called Bob. Bob called the next door neighbour who came over and stormed into Kevin's room, scaring the shit out of Kevin and his buddies. He then tried to bribe Matt with a few grams of weed as well. Matt also turned him down. Kevin and his buddies then tried to hide in the garage after the neighbour left. Matt found them when one of them knocked over a small aquarium and broke it, and they ran out through the back door. Bob and Anne skipped half of the plans they had and came home early. Needless to say, Kevin is in a world of trouble. A quick update on his shenanigans over the last couple of weeks. He got a job at Dairy Queen and got fired after a week for not maintaining a professional demeanour. That's retail speak for, he can't keep his mouth shut around the customers. His bike got stolen. Again, he failed to lock it up while at work. Again, he's now on bike number three this year and he's already damaged the rear rim twice and bent a part of the frame. I still have no idea how one person could be so hard on a bike. He sliced a finger open because he tried to touch the non serrated side of a bandsaw blade while it was running. His reasoning was that he didn't think it would hurt because the side of the blade isn't sharp. Kevin is still Kevining up, here are the highlights since the last update. He's working at Taco Bell and got written up because he was purposely making orders wrong. He was leaving off the tomatoes because he doesn't like tomatoes and didn't think anyone else liked them either. He lost his cell phone. According to Bob, this is the 13th, yes, 13th phone Kevin has lost this year. He got busted for trying to buy cigarettes at a convenience store. He's two years too young to buy them legally. The manager of the store knows Bob and Dan, so he called them to let them know. Kevin got in trouble. He's tried to buy cigarettes from the same store two more times since then, with similar results. Autumn hit us like a Brannigan's law and all the leaves fell at once.
Kevin was supposed to mow them into the lawn, but he put it off for a week and an early snowstorm dumped 16 inches on us. It soon melted, the leaves remained and were now soaked, and Kevin was told that he had to rake them now rather than mow them. He tried to mow them anyway and clogged the mower, then tried to hide the mower and told Bob he couldn't find the rake. Speaking of mowers, earlier in the year when he was supposed to mow the yard, he decided he'd rather not. Bob and I watched him open a bottle of water, pour it into the mower's gas tank and try to start it up. After a minute of trying and failing to start the thing, he came in and told Bob that, oh darn, the mower won't start. Guess I can't mow today after all. Bob wasn't amused. Last update here before this post gets archived. Kevin is currently taking driver's ed, one of those do-it-at-home internet classes. He's required to have so many hours of class time and he's discovered that if he starts a lesson and lets it play while he does anything else, it counts as class time. Shockingly, he's failed the tests at the end thrice now and plan to take him to get his permit this week. And after he got a whopping 12% on his final test, she decided that it may not have been the best idea. He announced to me that he's been learning all about our government and once he turned 18, he wanted to run for office. May the gods have mercy on our souls. Which one was your favourite Kevin story? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.